What is up, Chiefs Kingdom? My name is Jace Andrews, and you're watching the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. Well, on today's show, we're going to dive deep into the Chris Jones situation and kind of explore how this entire thing has played out. Here's how we stand as of right now. So, Jones is still without a contract. He claims that, he's gonna willing, that he is willing to sit out until week eight of the NFL season, but there has been reports in the past couple days that talks between Chris Jones and his camp and the Chiefs have been increased, so to say. So let's go and see how exactly we got here. So the first thing we're going to start off with today is happened a little bit ago, and that was the release of Frank Clark. Now, Frank Clark was released back in the springtime area, and, well, the reason why this is important is well, it was Chris Jones' best friend. They did everything together. They were on the field and happy. They liked each other's company. I mean, they were truly best friends. And he was released back in March. So that kind of just started the train rolling, I think, was the biggest thing. As the extension talks were there, there wasn't necessarily a lot of them, but it was pretty obvious that Chris Jones had liked Frank Clark around, and without him, extension talks were like, eh, maybe I won't play until that happens. And I got to say, I mean, losing your BFF hurts. It's not fun. I know that it's pretty hard, especially, I mean, the NFL is a business, so it's one of those things of you got to be ready for that to happen. But at the same time, you understand Chris Jones wanting to play with his best friend. I mean, just let me know. What's your best friend's name? Because my, mine is Ryan. My best friend's name is Ryan. And if I was playing on an NFL team with him, and all of a sudden that team released Ryan, well, I'd be pretty, I'm not going to say pleased with that. I'd be a little upset. I'd want him on my team. I'd want him to be around me just because you want to have kind of that camaraderie with your friend on the team. So that was step one. Then we go to step two. And that was the other defensive tackle extensions, which not, did not necessarily help Chris Jones in terms of maybe getting a deal done. So the four big ones that we're going to talk about is Quinn and Williams getting four years for $96 million, Dexter Lawrence with the Giants getting four years and $90 million, Jeffrey Simons getting four years, $94 million, and Darren Payne getting four years, $90 million. Well, what exactly does Chris want? because all these guys got those. Well, he wants a deal that's more than that. He wants one that's going to pay him $30 million annually. And so just going off that, those guys are four years. Do some quick math. Well, that's 120000 Jones deserves more than those two. I will say, he deserves more than those four. He is a better player than those four. I think Quinn and Williams maybe gets close to him, but the stats that he put up last year did not do that. And if you look at the highest paid interior defensive lineman, I think he fits around that two and one mark in between that area between Aaron Donald and Quinn and Williams. He has played well the past couple of years. His last year was proof that he deserves one of the top contracts in the entire NFL in terms of interior defensive lineman. So I'm thinking he's probably one in that $30 million. I think he's probably worth maybe around the 27 to 28 mark. Now, before we get too much into this Chris Jones situation, I want you to subscribe to have Chiefs news at your fingertips. Because however this Chris Jones saga continues, ends, no matter what, we're going to have it all right here. On top of which, the Chiefs start their season in less than a week. And I want you to be a part of the Chiefs Report Kingdom, the Chiefs Report family. So make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to go the extra mile, make sure you hit that red button. You never miss a video, and you're always on top of your Chiefs news and rumors. All right, the third event that happened kind of was the start of the, not going to say the end, but the shock factor that really came in when Chris Jones skipped OTAs and minicamp. So let's kind of go through what happened during that entire process. Now, Brett Veach expressed confidence in June about getting a deal done with Chris Jones. But that report was kind of nullified because during OTAs and minicamp, well, Adam Schefter came out and said that Jones and his camp and the Chiefs they're far apart in terms of what exactly their requests are on each side. And then to go even further, Andy Reid kind of came out and just said that he was surprised by Jones' absence 
in terms of skipping out on OTAs and minicamp, which, I mean, you can't blame a head coach. He would want his best guy to be there, best guy on the defense. You want him there. So that's kind of what happened with OTAs and minicamp. And then going further than that, well, then he held out of training camp, which made people, I'm going to say, even more scared. So with that, he did not show up. He was not there for a single day of minicamp, or excuse me, training camp. And so with that, he got a $50,000 fine each day. The fines are racking up for Jones. I mean, I got to be honest. Those fines are coming in like candy at a candy shop. There is literally nothing stopping them right now. And every single big event, big game, practice, whatever you want to say, miss, he misses, that fine is just going to go higher and higher and higher. So let's look at kind of the details of the fines and how they've come about. I mentioned it before, $50,000 for every day, that tr of every, every day of training camp that he missed. Now, this past Wednesday, his fines surpassed $2 million. I don't, I don't know about you, that's not chump change. And maybe for a guy like Chris Jones, not a chance, though. It's, it, it, there's no way that's just chump change at this point. Now, should Jones not report until week eight, well, he's going to be sacrificing nearly $10 million in salary. $10 million. That's just not what you want. Now, I'll get into why week eight is the important week in just a moment, but I want you to answer this question for me. Fill in the blank. Chris Jones' first game will be week blank. To me, I think it's going to be week five. I think he said week eight for the wow factor on Twitter of, hey, guess what? I'm not going to be there to week eight. But I think when it comes down to push and shove, it's going to be week four. It's going to be week five. But I want you to get in the comments and type which week you think he'll be back, if any. Now, I mentioned week eight, and there's a reason behind that. It's because Chris Jones said he's willing to skip, sit until week eight. Now, we'll go through the entire kind of Twitter debacle here in just a moment. But to kind of set the scene, Chris Jones on Twitter, well, he's a guy that likes to post stuff. And whether they're cryptic or not, he's a guy that will put stuff that kind of just comes off as uh, not exactly clear. So let's go through what exactly came about with Week 8. So the first tweet said, came here and said, so when are you going to show up? Because you'll be playing too much on Twitter and social media. You've been an all-pro on social media during training camp. You're under contract for this year. For how much money? I bet it's rough being a $20 million, 20, getting $20 million a year, which I agree. Which then Chris Jones replied, Week 8. All right. That's a big slap in the face. Guy was kind of calling him out. And so another... Chiefs kind of reporter, Arrowhead Live, came in and said, that'd be a hefty tab, which it would be. We just mentioned. It would be nearly $10 million he is sacrificing in salaries, not to mention the fines that would add up. Well, he responded with this. I can afford it. I can afford it. That's all we got. I can afford it. Which he's right. He can afford it. That is correct. But, oh my gosh, that would be not only a huge blow to money, that would be a huge blow to possibly what he would get next year when he's a free agent. That's just going to take a lot of money out of your salary, too, and fine. So I have to ask, when is it not worth it for Jones? Because every single day, he's just losing more money. He's not making that money. And it's just going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the well of trying to say that I'm going to wait, that I'm going to stay here. I'm going to plant my foot and that I am not going to budge until the Chiefs give me what I deserve, which I don't blame the guy. He deserves what he has earned. We mentioned early in the show, Brett Veach said that he deserves a pay raise. Well, when does it become enough, though? Because I think what he's asking and what the Chiefs are willing to give him with cap space, they're obviously not close. Again, I think my final thought here, I'd say Chris Jones, if you're listening, if you're watching, $27, 28000000 million a year. I think that's even on both sides. It helps the Chiefs a little bit with cap space. I think that's the best thing. Subscribe to the Chiefs Report if you want more content, news, rumors, shows like this, talks about Chris Jones. And hey, the season's coming about. We're just under a week, so make sure you subscribe for all the latest on the Chiefs.